Thank you, Keith. Can everybody hear me well? Perfect. It's the first time I use something like this, so I feel pretty fancy today. <laughs> All right. First and foremost, I'd like to start off with a prayer. Um, can anybody pray for me? Just anybody. Please. Father in heaven, please be with Henry right now. And be with all of us, Lord. May the Spirit of God hover in this place. And may the Spirit open our minds and open his mouth. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All righty. So, I, when I usually preach, I like to be a little bit interactive with everybody. So, um, my preaching is going to be a lot regarding prayer. But for that, I'd like to have somebody participate and tell me when they actually... We all have one in our heart, and I know that for a fact. That one prayer that you remember that got answered. Any shows of hands. There's one prayer in your heart that you know what got answered. And you hold on, you hold that dear in your heart. Go ahead. Uh, a short version of this story is in Vancouver. Our youngest daughter was found. She had gone to see the fireworks in Vancouver, and in that morning of Christmas crowd, she got lost, separated from her. Mm. And it was now coming close to midnight. She was separated. Pam had had gone to the car before it was locked in the underground parking, and Henry driving around looking for her, but because of the crowds, there were many barricades, and he had to go way out of his way. In the meantime, she was walking with people about her block, but mm. eventually was all by herself, and probably one of the worst grief in her entire life. Mm. And she decided that she should pray. So she stood in one of the well-lit uh, storefronts and prayed. And when she opened her eyes, Pam was right in front of her <laughs> in the car. She didn't see her, but she ran off and lost on her own way. And uh, all the time of her life, whenever she had some kind of stress or crisis or was scared or whatever, I would remind her that on that night, before she called, she mm. ran off. Amen. Now, will you all agree that we all have that one prayer in our heart that was answered whether immediately, a few years down the road. Yeah? Show of hands. Because I, I know everybody has felt that one day. Now, why do I bring that up? And the title of my preaching, which is Yes, No, and Maybe. We would all love to have a yes when we have our prayers. Would we not? Can we all agree on that? <laughs> right? We would all love to say Lord, I want to open up my bank account and have a million dollars in there. <laughs> right? <laughs> we all would. Same thing as, Lord, let it today not snow. I want to get as fast as I can at church. Sometimes it just doesn't happen, right? And by the end of this preaching, you guys will get to know me a little bit better because I'll use a lot of examples in my life where I feel... That prayer was answered immediately, not necessarily, and it took a while. The first prayer that I remember that is so vivid in my mind, when I asked, and it was an immediate yes, was I was, I would say, 19 years old. My dad had started again indulging in alcohol. Our financial was just going down and spiral. My mom wasn't working anymore. Her knees were really, really bad. And I remember she comes up to me and she says, Henry, the rent is due. We have no food. What are we going to do? My brother Raphael had recently gotten married. So I couldn't ask him for a handout. <laughs> that was for sure. He was so struggling on, on his own. My older brother had gone and lived with his girlfriend, so little old me. And for, who, for everybody who doesn't know, I'm the baby of the family. I'm the runt. <laughs> and you're sitting there. I, was, I still remember because I was by the computer. I, um, I had a wiener dog back in those days, and the, I used to cross my legs and stretch them out, and she would uh, fall asleep in between my legs. And I remember sitting there, and, I was, and as my mom was saying this, 
I, I got so concerned and I said to myself, and this is a matter of seconds, right? And you don't want to show that you're concerned to your, to your mother who's coming to you, which usually you should come to her, right? But she comes to me and then in my mind, I'm like, what in the world am I going to do? But I didn't show anything, any emotion. I just turned to my mom and I said, don't worry about it. She, was, she looks at me and she says, what do you mean don't worry about it? Don't worry about it. God will provide. And in those two seconds, I did not kneel. I just shut my eyes, bent, looked downwards, and prayed. I said, Lord, let it be your will. That was it. Didn't ask for anything. I said, Lord, let it be your will. I opened the, the, the web browser, and it, ironically enough, and it opened up in, um, in a web page called Indeed, which is a you know, job searching engine. And it said right there, looking for bilingual customer service representative. I had no experience, had always worked in manual labor, did not know anything regarding uh, customer service. But I said to myself, and I've always been this way, is that the worst thing I can hear is a no or not, not hear, hear anything back. So I said to myself, you know what, I'm just gonna apply. Did a really interesting resume, which <laughs> I still don't know how that worked. It was bunched in all these words together, trying to look as impressive as it could, and sent it off. Exactly 24 hours later, I get a phone call. Henry, we got your resume. We're very much interested. Why don't you come in for an interview? So I was like, oh, wow, that was fast. I get there. And in my mind, it was like, oh, it's going to be just me. It was a room full of people. I'm not even exaggerating about the same amount of people that are in here. And there were people of certain age, greater than mine, some younger. And in my mind, I, I was looking at it and I was, I was saying to myself, how am I going to compete with these people? How are they going to see that I'm the, the person that they should hire? So again, closed my eyes, looked down and said, God, let it be your will. You know my needs, let it be your will. Go through the interview process. Everything is going really well until the second portion of the interview where it was everybody, uh, everybody's in the same, um, they call it uh, group interviews. So we're all sitting in there and everybody's giving their experience and everybody's saying, I can do this, I know that, and blah, blah, blah. And, I, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, it's gonna come to my turn. What in the world am I gonna say? And I'm trying to find really cool words in my mind. What can, okay, I can say this, which is not true. So in my mind, I'm like, no, no, no. Stick to what you know. Stick exactly to what you know. So the question to me goes, Henry, if you have a customer that is very frustrated, how would you handle the call? And God is my witness. The way I answer is, I'll just shut up and listen and wait until it's my turn to talk. And then everybody looked at me because nobody, everybody kept on giving like some great explanation on what to do and what not. And then the lady looked at me and she's like, that's actually what you're supposed to do. Uh, so I was like, I, I, till this day, I still cannot believe that that was actually the correct answer. But anyways. And then they switched interviewers, and then this other lady came in, which was, she was very rude from the very beginning. She sat down, she looked, she stared everybody down, and she goes, okay, guys, this is a very simple job. You guys have to work from Monday to Sunday, whatever schedule we give you, and that's the end of it. So evidently, as a seven-day Adventist, I was sitting there, I was like, you're not touching my Sabbath. But I didn't say anything right there and then. So I was like, okay. I let her talk, and she was very rude about it because there was a guy that was, um, uh, he, uh, he was Jewish, and he said, well, I, I don't work on Sabbath. Well, this job is not for you. I didn't say anything. I was like, okay, learn and watch. <laughs> so I kept quiet. The interview went on, that, uh, that gentleman stood up and left. So I let the interview go on, the lady kept on talking about other stuff, and then came the, sec uh, the third part of the interview, where I got to sit down, and thank God that happened, with another Hispanic person. And he sits down with me and he, he starts talking, and I remember so vividly because um, something of him was, was very interesting, he was missing one, um, one hand 
And that's why I remember him so much because uh, we talked about it. But then I remember we were having this conversation. He tested me in French and Spanish and English and all these things. And then he goes, uh, no, no. And then I stopped the interview and I was like, you know what, Emilio, uh, no. Yeah, Emilio, uh, let's stop the interview. And he's shocked, looks at me. Well, why? Well, the lady before said that we have to work Saturdays and look, as much as I want this job, I need the money, I just can't do it. Oops, I, I just can't do it. Um, it's my Sabbath, I can't break Sabbath, it is what it is. I don't wanna waste your time, I don't wanna waste mine, let's just leave it to that. And he goes, no, 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 wait, don't move, stay seated please. Okay, leaves the room, I don't know to who, who, who he went to talk to, maybe to the HR rep or whatnot. Comes back about 10 minutes later, and I'm sitting there, I'm sweating. I, I kid you not, like my back was so wet that day. Like I, I'm pretty sure I left an imprint on that chair. But anyways. <laughs> and then the guy comes back in and he looks at me and he's like, Henry, um, how would you feel about working a split shift? And because I didn't know what it was, and I was like, well, why don't you explain what that is? He's like, well, it's very simple. You start at eight in the morning, you finish at 12, you have a break between 12 and four, and then you come back at four, and from four to eight. I was like, well, I don't mind. In Montreal, the, the metro system is so perfect that you can get in downtown within 10 to 15 minutes. So I looked at him and I was like, look, I really don't mind, whatever. I, at least I get to go home and have a nap. Guy goes, looks at me, and he's like, okay, well, don't even worry about it. You have your Saturdays and your Sundays off. You just need to do the split shift. I did not know. I found out like maybe a year later that right there and then, it's when they invented that split shift. <laughs> right? I was so impressed. And then, because like, it was epic because Every time I would go to work and people would see me leave at a certain time, they were like, hey, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm on a split shift. It's like, what is that? Well, apparently I start at this time, have this break, and then I come back for this. And you could see the people's jealousy in their face. Whoa, wait a minute, well, I wanna have that. <laughs> and then, well, HR had no choice but to, <laughs> you know, to, uh, to, to tell other people, you know, okay, you can start applying for that. But it was only in certain special circumstances, right? But that was the very first time no, I won't say the very first time, but the, fir the, the, most, the, the first time that I felt so impacted by prayer. And why do I say that? Because it was instantaneous. Everything fell exactly how it had to fall. And I ended up being blessed for about a year, two years, no, about, about a year, about a year with that job. And the, 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 the most interesting part is that between, within that year, I had other prayers going. But that one sticks the most because it was answered immediately. And it was a yes, which we all can agree is the best thing that can happen to you when it's a yes. Uh, exactly. <laughs> but, and let me, let me stick to that same story. And in that same year, <sighs> I was dating this other person which my wife has forgiven me, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I was dating this person, and we all know that love, that high school love or that you know, young love where you want it to be her, but it's not her. And you explain to a thousand people, you don't know her. No, 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 I, only I know her, only I understand her. And you give reasons to people why you know, it's supposed to be, but we all know it's not, but anyways. And I remember praying, and I, was, and I kept on saying to God, God, let it just happen. Let it be the person that I, that, that I marry. You know, I, I wanted it so badly to be her, but not really, and I'll, I'll get into why. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I was saying, you know, I, I, I just, I, I wanted to be her. But then, you know, I realized that God was saying no, but we don't have a God that says no and it's no, right? 
We have a God that says no, and there's a reason why there's a no, and you will have a yes eventually, but it's a no for now. So it's not an eternal no. And it was interesting because I wanted it, I, because by then my brother was already about a year and a half married. So you're looking at your older brother and you're, you're hoping to have the same, the same thing, a family, uh, no, I mean, sorry, a marriage <clears throat> and an incoming uh, daughter. And you're wanting these things. So that's why I'm saying, you know, it was a yes, but not really. Like I really wanted it, but not necessarily with her. I just wanted what my, my brother was portraying. But I was, I was so focused in wanting that and asking God, let it be her, that was I asking the right question to God? Was, I, was, my, was my prayer well-versed? Come again? I was asking whose will? My own. And what was so difficult about that is that I was getting a no but it wasn't really a no. It was, no, it's not that person for you. And I thank God for that every day. And I, without exaggerating, within that same year, we finally broke up. And I said to the Lord, Lord, <clears throat> whenever you think I'm ready, send me the person I'm meant to marry. Doesn't matter how long it takes. Doesn't matter how she looks. It doesn't matter, you know, who her family is. I just want you to send me the perfect person for me. I, I, and it's interesting, and I'll make a little parenthesis with that, with that story, is that I had a friend. His name was Marco. His name is Marco, sorry. And this guy, I swear, he, he was such... Everybody, every man in our church used to envy that guy. And why? Because every time an amazing, good-looking girl would come to church, it was like they were falling into like flies all over this guy. And then everybody else is there sitting there, and you're like, well, you know, just wait my turn here. You know? <laughs> and yet he would say no to every single girl. And I'm talking about like world-class girls. I'm talking about like ladies that could cook, Clean, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> good looking. You guys know what I mean. The men that are laughing know exactly what I mean. <laughs> and every time we would see him, he would say no to these girls. And we were left wondering, buddy, what is wrong with you? Every, we would sit down with all of us guys and, and go over it and we're like, what did he see wrong with this girl? You know, and, you know, we would talk to them and be like, are you serious? Why, Marco? And then he said, well, it's not the, the, the girl that God is sending me. And then you're wondering, okay, well, that's interesting. Until one day, <laughs> we were having a group prayer, and we were all saying, um, we were having our prayer and asking what really was in our heart. And then we get to Marco. It's so funny. He starts praying. He's like, Lord, I need you to send me a wife. But I want her to be 5'7". I want her to be blonde, blue eyes, German, but she can speak Spanish. <laughs> this is the first time that we all unanimously let go of our hands, we opened our eyes and we were looking at him, but he, went, he was very intensely praying. But we were st standing there and we're like, buddy, are you serious? Yet all these girls come through. They were not exactly how you wanted it, but they were world-class girls, and yet you said no. Can I ask you guys a question? Was God saying no to him? Who thinks what God was, was saying no to him? at that moment, in his prayer, asking for a wife. Show of hands. Who, who thinks he was, there was, he was, God was saying no? God was saying yes all the time, but it's not like you wanted it. It's exactly what you needed. But it's hard sometimes to see the difference. I think we can all agree on that. It's hard to see when God is telling you, this is what you need, 
but I'm not giving you too much what you want because then you start making that gap between you and him. How easy would it be if you were to pray right now and say, God, you know I'm missing this amount of money. I need it right now. You get and you get extra. And then you start seeing your relationship going, the closeness with God further apart. Why? Because as humans, we have that problem, that tendency to just then assume, well, it was all me all, all the time. It's so easy to say that. You know, that, that want to, to feel that you're superior, that you've accomplished all these things when you know it all started with a prayer. And it's, and it's hard, like I said again, it's hard to explain that to somebody that's going through a rough time. At times, for example, thank God for Beth that she, 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 she got her, her child back. But for those ones that are actually never getting their child back, for example, how do you tell them, you know, they tell you, I've been praying every single night to God and asking him, bring me back my child. And she's not walking through that door or he's not walking through that door. How do you tell them that? It's a difficult moment in life to tell somebody, it's, God is not telling you no. But God is definitely listening. And it's difficult. It's difficult to tell them also, it's not a no, it's a maybe actually. Why is it a maybe? Well, maybe you'll see him when Christ comes back. It's hard to say, and it's hard to, to vocalize to somebody that's going through, through a, such a rough time. But you remind them of the promise that God has given us every single day. And that at the same time, we have to learn to understand His will. And God would never give you a struggle that He knows you cannot go through. It is up to us to find comfort in God with his prayer. It's hard to tell God when you're seeing your, 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 your parent, your son being ill and ask him, rather than asking him, God, make him, make him get better, make him walk again, make him run or, you know, whatever. And instead of saying, God, let it be your will. It's not the easiest thing in the world. It's the most difficult thing. Because you know God will answer that prayer. But are we going to be ready for that answer? Because I can, guarantee, I can tell you guys for a fact that God always says yes. It's just sometimes it's not the yes that we're looking for. And it's hard. As, as a parent, as a brother, as a husband, as a son... It's the most difficult thing sometimes to go through and seeing the will of God because it doesn't agree to what you want. And it's difficult to explain to other people so they can see the hand of God. Because then you'll have other people tell you, no, see, your God was mean because he, he, he allowed your father to be an alcoholic. See, if it wasn't because of God, and God would have, where was your God when, you know, he was gone? That, that may be true. They may, they may have a really good argument, but I can say, well, yeah, God was with me because I still had a mom. God gave me two older brothers. I maybe didn't have a dad, but I had two older brothers. And like I said again, it's not the perfect answer that we're looking for but it is the answer that God gave you. And it's the blessings that he gives you, which are hard at times, very much at times, when we're going through difficult times. And it's even more difficult to pray for those who have wronged us. I, I knew a friend of mine, and thank God his, God, his heart changed in that aspect, but he would purposely do a prayer to wish ill on the person that had wronged him. Yeah. 
God did not create prayer so we can want to hurt somebody else. That was not the intent of prayer. And prayer is such an important aspect of our lives, such as Christians and altogether as beings made by God, that like anything that is very important in our lives, it must be used correctly and appropriately. Because God listens, but you know also who is wanting to listen? Who wants to intercept our prayers and make it worse? So we have to be careful at times, even when we're thinking that we're doing the right thing, because somebody else can also listen and interfere in God's work. It's hard to ask God to bless somebody that has stolen from us in any aspect of our lives. But that's what God sends us to do. And I want to take the time to look in our Bibles, in the book of Matthew. Chapter 6. Verse 9 to 13. And I'll do, I'd like to do a chain reading on this matter. And I'll go ahead and start with number 9. Feel free to jump in, whoever wants to participate in the reading. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven... Alloweth be your name. Give us today the food we need. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And don't let us hear you temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Amen. What I like about this prayer is it doesn't tell you, ask for a bank, uh, ask for a, a restaurant to be fed. It doesn't tell you, you know, hurt the one that has hurt you. It doesn't say, do whatever I want me, I want you to, do for me whatever I want you to do for me. It says, let it your will be done. Give us our daily bread. God will always, give, if we ask, God will always give you what you need, when you need it, and how you need it. God is good all the time, and all the time he is good. I am so grateful that God has put me such in a, in a way to be with you wonderful people and be now part of this church. The Lord is still making my path, and I'm glad it's with you guys. Amen. You will guide me to hopefully to perfection as much as I hope to guide you guys into perfection. Thank you very much for your time. And before I close off, there's one little thing I just want to do with you guys. Feel free not to do it. But I want to do a prayer, and I want to ask five people if they can do each a prayer out loud, and then I'll close off. So whoever wants to pray, please stand up. I'm just asking for five people, is all. So feel free to stand up. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, I was being very uh, optimistic for five, but oh, four, thank you. All right, come on, I'm just needing that extra person. I know you want to stand up. It just takes that little umph. There you go, five. 
All right, so we'll start with Donna. We'll go that way. People will have the, the fifth one, and I'll close off after that. one of us will entrust you with our prayers, no matter how they turn out, and that we will know, even though they may not go the way we want them to go, that we know that they will always go the way you want them to go. And we just ask that you would just put in our hearts to trust you each day to spend that time with you, to share all of our struggles and our wants and our needs, that they will always go to you first. And dear Lord, I just ask that we would continue to trust you in every way. Thank you, Lord, that prayer is real and that it works. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, all I want to say to you is thank you. Thank you because you know what's in our heart, you know what we need, and you provide it every single day. Help us to better understand you and to always be guided by your hand. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Oh, and just so you know, the story ended really well because he did send me my wife. And three kids later, I can tell you I'm very happy. <laughs>